It's time for high school football. I'm Jeff Porsche welcoming you to Griffin Field in Geismer for tonight's Thursday night edition of the Grand <laughs> between the Dutchtown Griffins and the Walker Wildcats. Before we talk about tonight's district opening game, we're going to send it over to Megan Archer, who is standing by with some student interns from Dutchtown High School's sports and entertainment marketing class. Thanks, Jeff. This year, Rev is partnering with Dutchtown High School's sports and, and entertainment marketing class to offer an internship opportunity for a game of the week. And tonight, I'm here with some of the students. I have Brian and Cullen. So, Brian, tell me, uh, what are some things y'all do in the class? So as a class, we learn to break down and edit film using, using Adobe. And we also create, like, highlights using Adobe, uh, edit football film using um using Huddle. Okay. Okay, awesome. So Cullen, this I know this is the first year Dutch Town's offering this class. What what made you enroll in the class? Um I like business things and stuff like that and then I like sports too, so it was just combining the two. Awesome. So what would you guys say is some of your, what's been your favorite thing so far? Um, learning the ins and outs of football, really. And, like, learning, like, what really goes on, like, in the football huddle and the football field and things like that. So do you enjoy editing or? Mm -hmm. I enjoy editing a lot, you know, really. It's like a mind opener, kind of, you know. It's like kind of something I might do when I graduate high school this, this semester. Okay. Okay. And Cullen, what about you? What are, what are some of the things that you enjoy about the class? Um, I get to bring my creativity into editing the videos and things like that. I get to make it my own thing. Awesome. And I know this is your second time partnering, uh, interning with us. What would you say you've learned so far uh, with, with, with observing Game of the Week live production? Well, I've learned the things that go into like producing a whole football thing on TV and like the thing that goes around up in the booth and stuff like that. Awesome. Well, thank you guys both so much for joining me. That's it from the field. We'll be right back with Rev Game of the Week. Chris Especially Foods has been making Cajun meat products for almost 30 years. We do all the prep work so people can have home cooked meals without spending all day in the kitchen. Everything is done ourselves. With three locations in Louisiana and a fourth in Texas, we needed all of them connected to the same system for point of sale and telephone. Rev Business set us up and it's been a game changer. They have everything as national companies but with real local service. Rev Business is authentic Louisiana, just like Chris's. B.T. Chapman and A.J. Pickett with Advantage Therapy are honored and excited to team up with Dutchtown High School's athletics. At Advantage Therapy, we are dedicated to helping our patients regain the highest possible functional status through one-on-one -on -one patient care. Advantage Therapy has spent nearly two decades providing both outpatient orthopedic physical therapy and occupational therapy to the people of Ascension and surrounding parishes. From all of us at Advantage Therapy, Go Griffins! Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyron Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Hi, we are live with the PPTV Network, where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character, and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their record of success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy.
for your car. The Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants to buy your car. It's fast, easy, and fair. No matter what make, no matter what model, no matter what mileage, the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants it. And we'll pay you cash for it, even if you don't buy from us. It's the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Cash for your car at the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Title Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Title Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Title Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You gotta call. You gotta call Title. Welcome back to the Rev Game of the Week. I'm Jeff Porsche, and we are at Griffin Field in Dutchtown for Walker at Dutchtown as the 5-5A district season begins. Doubleheader night, Thursday, Friday doubleheader night on Rev as tonight we have Walker at Dutchtown and then Friday night I'll be over at the pit for the Rev Friday night game of the week which is EA at Santa Ma. So big doubleheader week here on Rev TV big doubleheader week in district 55 a and now I'm joined by my Dutchtown partner as usual Pat email and I'm glad to have you out here tonight and uh, Pat while we're getting ready for the beginning of this game and the team teams coming out of their puddles and coming onto the field uh, let's take a look at what the the two teams are going to well, let's just look at the coaches' records, I guess. Well, you got Chad Mahaffey in his fourth year, Jeff, and Guy Mastretta, you know, and I'm looking at it. I think Mahaffey has three state championships over at U High before coming over to Walker. Uh, probably a pretty good reason why Jason St. Pierre, the, the principal at Walker, went searching for Chad Mahaffey. And then Guy Mastretta got, if memory serves me, one at Redemptress and one at Livonia. Yeah. Uh, so he's got so five state championships between them. So quality coaches here uh, at Griffin Field tonight, Jeff. And when we look at the all-time series, there's not much of a series here. They haven't played a lot of years. Uh, this hasn't been a district game. This is the first time it's a district matchup. But they have had a home-and-home home back in 05-06, Dutchtown back in the day when they were running strong under Benny Saya with the two wins right there. And then 17-18, that was kind of the transition time between uh, Saya and Mastretta. And uh, Walker had a pretty good program back then, and they won both those games, 35-10 and 35-18. And then, uh, Patrick, you were out here last week. Uh, talk about the two games that were played last week with these two teams so before we before we get to that Jeff, i want to talk about uh, mention that 2018 game uh, the guy that's uh making some big plays uh right down the road for the lsu fighting time uh tigers is thomas yeah the wide receiver brian he, he, he brian thomas he was they threw a slip screen to him down here to our left about the 10 yard line and uh, i think he took it to the house because that game was close at halftime and it wasn't until they started getting the ball to Thomas who I think may have been a sophomore at the time and then the the point guard that was at LSU for a while that ended up at Tulane uh, wearing the green again uh, so they had some outstanding football players uh, when they the, the Wildcats beat the Griffins in 2018 last week Jeff I thought Carver you know, kind of tested Dutchtown a little bit. You know, we coming in, we wasn't sure what to expect. Carver lost 35-34 to Santa Ma early in the year. And Carver tries a, a long field goal. 
and that kind of shocked us. But adversity has been the name of the game for the Griffins so far, Jeff, with the loss to North Shore in a closely contested game, 13 to nothing. Offense still trying to figure it out. Pontitula, the conditions were just uh, unbelievable. Covington went up 14 nothing, tied the ball game. Dutchtown responded, uh, scored 28 unanswered. Last week, scored early, easy, and didn't have a fir- didn't have a third down. I don't think on that first drive and scored. Then fell 15 to seven. Were able to respond 30 unanswered for the Griffins to pull ahead. And Walker beats Bel Air 42 to nothing. Uh, Bel Air struggling to kind of get back. Right. Walker has the uh, better record coming into tonight. They're four and one. Dutchtown two and two. But Dutchtown's on an upswing. And Walker, like you said, Bel Air, really not a not a uh, not a a, a team that's going to really do a lot this season and so that's kind of an unknown when you get into that and so that's what we have getting ready for tonight's game and you see the field now as we are getting ready as the uh, the, the Dutchtown Sound getting ready to take the field as well as Dutchtown High School we'll take it to the PA announcer right now And here's your Dutchtown Griffin. And so the Griffins take the field and they are ready to start and looks like back in black tonight for Dutchtown as they're going to wear the black jerseys tonight with the uh, black helmets uh, the sharp black look and you see the Dutchtown sound at all black as well as Walker takes the field they're going to be in all white green is their primary color but they're going to be wearing the white jerseys here tonight as it is Yep. Oh, I, I, the black on black looks sharp, Jeff. Uh, when I say black on black, black helmet, black uh, jerseys, white pants, that's that's a pretty sharp, sharp look. Yep, it's it's the, uh, the all black tonight as you see the Dutchtown Sound performing under Sheely Bell, and we're getting ready for the national anthem and Ladies the presentation and of the colors. Will you please rise for tonight's invocation? It will be delivered by Dutchtown Jr. who saw your buffkin. A fellowship of Christian athletes leader. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and having the ability to come together here in this beautiful weather. God, I ask you to keep all the players, coaches, referees, and fans safe. And we thank you for all of the teachers, faculty, and volunteers that allow us to make this event possible today. I pray that all players do not seek their individual glory, but God, they play for your glory and for the good of the team. Let us all show sportsmanship and respect for members of the opposing team and their fans. We thank you for all that you've done, are doing, and will do. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the Dutchtown Sound with the national anthem. And we are just about ready to get as we uh, get the alma mater before we start. I believe we are just about ready for the coin toss as soon as the Dutchtown Sound leaves the field as the Dutchtown captains are ready to go and the captains are going to be A.K. Pharrell, Pearson Pyron, and they're going to be also joined by Ethan Fields I got you, I got you. and Dixon Agu. And so those will be the Dutchtown captains and we'll get the Walker captains as they cross the field. And uh, one thing that we want to bring up while we're waiting for the coin toss to here tonight, Patrick, one of the captains, Pearson Pyron, who has kind of played that utility role here in the first four games of the season. Tonight he's going to take on a new role. He is going to be the starting quarterback as he's going to, going to replace Ethan Oakwin, who has an ankle injury and may miss a couple of weeks here. Well, it's a uh, a new position, but an old position. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting. You know, he played well last week. It's kind of I want to say mop up duty. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word when you when you technically He's the starter and they put you in there to get a few reps uh, late in the game. Uh, so it's kind of be old hat. Started as a sophomore uh, and as a junior and. It, it's pretty nice to be able to hand the football over to a guy who's got. Uh, over 20 starts. Yes, it is. And uh, the, you see the captains on the other side for Walker. Number five, Carson Rocker. Number 13, Warren Young Jr. Number 60, Caden Peterson. And as you were talking about, Peterson. on a quarterback when he had an injury last week to Oakland. Dylan Champion came in and replaced him. He's going to be back up again tonight. He, uh, that was his first action Number 25, in varsity. He was a JV quarterback, but he may, he may be the backup again here tonight. But he not be as, uh, it's gonna, I think it's going to be a, to a Dutchtown's advantage to have Pyron a quarterback because you got three weapons on this team. you got Pyron, you got AK, and you got Gary Dukes. And with Pearson a quarterback, all three guys could get their hands on the ball. Well, you, you, you're talking about similar to last year when you had Langwa and Samson and, and Pearson. The Griffins and the way the toss. Gary ran It'll last week, a player of the half. week. 167 yards and a couple of TDs and a special teams tackle. Football uh, And then AK has come on this year. Providing and each so school with a dedicated and compassionate and athletic so trainer. On site, they will be from Dutchtown and Walker starters, High School. And they're going to be led by quarterback number nine, Landon Wagisback. Their running back is a pretty good one, Clyde McClendon. He's got 485 yards rushing on the season. And then their receivers are Warren Young. Junior, Jacory Thomas, and Austin Workman, also Jamari Evans. So they're going to kind of spread it out a lot. And the offensive line, Stephen Nelson, Chris Cornelius, Bradley Pickering, Jose Ordaz, and Mason Ball. So that's going to be the Walker starters as they take the field on offense first. And after the kickoff, we'll get to the Dutchtown defensive starters. Yeah. Jeff, is it, this game may go, go under an hour. <laughs> with uh, both teams probably trying to emphasize the run. So we'll see. 
You know, Dutchtown High has got uh, led by Purdue commit on the offensive line, Ethan Fields, and Walker's offensive line is supposed to be a work in progress, but their running back had four TDs last week. We expect a good game here as the kickoff is headed out of bounds, and so the flag will go down, and Walker will start in good field position. So Dutchtown's defense will have to take the field first, and let's take a look at their defensive starters. On the line, you have Braylon Richard, Baron Cozy, and Josh Lewis. And linebacker, outside linebackers, Carter Hanbury and Anson McCaffrey. Inside linebackers, Dixon Agu, Darius Jones. Cornerbacks, Caden Mackey, Cole Langwa. Safeties, A.K. Burrell and Cade Kling. And we're ready first and down, first and ten, excuse me, as they get ready to spot the ball at the 35-yard line. So they're working on the right hash to open this game. Well, they brought the football, Jeff. I'm laughing because they brought the football over here to get to give the kicking ball to Dutchtown, and Walker walked over to this hash, and they had to walk back to the other one. So first and ten, shotgun, one back, and they're going to roll out. Quarterback downfield, dropped, incomplete. Warren Young, Jr., the intended receiver, as the quarterback – is Hayden Price, number 11, to start the game for Walker. So the pass incomplete to Young, and it's going to bring up second down. Wide open, Jeff. Hit him in the hands. Nice throw. Second and 10. And there's a handoff up the middle, and the D-line greets him. Maybe drops him for a loss. As you see, number 34 down there in the pile for Dutchtown. As that's Blake Bowie. And we've seen him make a lot of big plays when he's been out there, Coach. Yeah, no, no doubt. Early in the season, we were, he wasn't a starter, and he's getting a chance to start tonight. And uh, Big third down early in the game. Third and 11, ball at the 34. Shotgun, looking right, throws, and it's nearly picked by Agu. Dixon Agu, the closest player to the ball, intended for Ja'Cory Thomas. And it's going to bring up fourth and 11 punting situation. Nice nice drop by, by Dixon right there. The wide receiver curled up at the first down sticks, tried to get it, and Agu uh, almost, if he didn't get it, it almost tipped to the, the safety. Uh, Kling. So now a punting situation. So Mackey back to receive. Low snap, gets it away, line drive, and it's going to bounce. It's going to take a decent bounce inside the 30, so Dutchtown will start first and 10 at the 27. Let's look at the Dutchtown offense as Pierce and Pyron and the Griffins get ready to take the field. Pyron at quarterback, the running backs, Gary Dukes and A.K. Burrell. And at receiver, you got a lot of receivers, but we're going to focus on Caden Mackey and Tyler Adams. You'll also see Casey McCoy out there, Alex Rutherford, tight end Dylan DeSherry, and in the offensive line, McKinney, Gotro, Cangelosi, Lowry, and Fields. So first and ten. Ball at the 27. Not 27 and a half. And there's a handoff and hesitation and waiting for the hole and gets good yardage. Gains about five. Dukes, it's going to bring up second down and about five. You know, Christian Gotro starting at that left guard. He got the start, I think, in the, the first game of the year when McKinney was out. Maybe it was the Jamboree uh, when McKinney was out. But that, uh, we'll talk about Gary Dukes in a second. Yeah, we'll get to the Walker defensive starters after this play, second and five. And that's Dukes. Cuts outside. First down. Out of bounds. Past the 40 to about the 42. So two carries for Dukes and a first down for the Griffins. Let's look at the Walker defense. Their starters on the line. You have Merrick Hall, Dante Flowers, and Austin Lockhart. Outside linebackers, Evan King and Patrick McKenzie. Inside linebackers, Connor Watts, Travion Thomas. Cornerbacks, Jaden Bardalis, Kedrick Brown. Safety, Carson Rocker. And Preston Hill, first and ten for Dutchtown. And this time it's a keeper. Option keeper for Pyron gets about three, and he's hit hard. Pops back up. Looks like a tackle made by 41. 
Dante Flowers. You know, Gary Dukes, two carries, 15 yards. Jeff picked up kind of where he left off last week. That hole opened up. Good job filling by, by the safety. Yeah, that was uh, 39, Preston Hill, who made the tackle. It was uh, Flowers who kind of cleaned up afterwards. Second and seven. And there's Dukes cutting outside. Turns the corner. Won't get to midfield as number 20, Bardalis, at that left corner position makes a tackle. It's going to be third and short. Third and third and short, Coach. That's a, that's a place Dutchtown wasn't early in the season. But you know, like the better call plays on third, three, third, and four. So we have a whistle. And it's going to be procedure against the Griffin. So so we kind of cursed them with the, uh, the, the third and short. Soon. Yep. Spoke too soon. So now it's third and long. Third and about nine, maybe a long eight. Well, and I shouldn't be a little bit surprised by that, Jeff. New quarterback. Done it before, but the O-line, those guys hadn't heard Pearson calling that cadence. Low snap, and they're going to try to get it on the ground with Dukes. Trying to break a tackle, gets his head past midfield. It's going to be fourth and two. And let's see if the uh, Griffins' offense stays on the field. I don't see – well, I see one substitution. I believe that's Kemp coming in. He's a running back, and they're going to replace Dukes. So it looks like they're going to go for it. At least, at least they're going to give the impression, maybe try to see if they can uh, make him jump. 8.45, first quarter, no score. And they're going to do it. Pearson's going to try to keep it. He is, is he's reaching for it, and I don't know. I think he's going to be, oh, he got a good spot, Jeff, but I think he's still going to be short. I don't know. That spot is just enough. And that's smart. Look, let's see, let's see if we can get a replay here. Let's see, let's see the reach. Because he was stopped. No replay on that one. But uh, he was stopped at about the 49, and he reached over about a yard and a half. I think he, uh, I think he stretched his arm uh, beyond its <laughs> normal length to get that. As it's going to be first and ten at the 47 and a half. So Pearson at quarterback. And they're going to give it to AK. And met by number 17. Big tackle there by the outside linebacker, Patrick McKenzie. On the, well, well, the defensive end did a great job, Jeff. He, he, he squeezed it, uh, forced that ball to bounce, and enabled the linebacker the to run flat to the outside. And, and Second down. Tackle Griffin. AK for a loss. Second and 12. Ball at midfield as we get to the 735 mark. Still no score. District 5-5A action starting. Walker versus Dutchtown. Second down. Gary Dukes in traffic. Maybe gets back to the Morrell original the line as they're going to let's see if they're going to spot Hall it. They're going to spot it for Walker for a loss. Well, actually for a, maybe a maybe a half a yard. Short now. gain. Third down. We'll call it third and eleven, Coach. Yeah. Well, it'll be the first time to see if Dutchtown uh, tries to get half of it here and go for it uh, on the ground. They ran it on third down last time. Pearson's going to roll out, and he's off his back foot. Receiver downfield, caught! Good catch. Number 16 for the Griffins. That's Jalen Gilbert. Jalen Gilbert. As he rolls out. And you see First Gilbert got behind the DBs, the had to wait for it for a second, but made the play and was able to hold on. Big play right there. Uh, Pearson kind of falling back, able to get enough on it. First and 10 from the 21. And motion. That's McKinney. McKinney knew it. You saw him kind of clap right after Flag it. On the play. You know, the, the one thing that probably Dutch frustrates the coach, if he takes yards, off and he pancakes somebody, start. the coach is probably like, okay. <laughs> but, but but if you're just going to stutter step off the line, that's when coach will probably go nuts. Yep. So, Tyron's first pass of the night complete. But first and 15 now after the penalty. And there's a keeper. And he chose wisely as he's down to the 10. Gets a first down, 16-yard run for Pyron. 
Pearson Farrell on the keeper. The fake, fake, fake the outside zone uh, to Dukes going left, and he Marcus kept it coming right. On the stop for Walker. Good blocking good downfield. Blocking, good blocking downfield. First and goal for Receivers the Receivers doing their jobs. I believe that was Tyler Adams, number eight. So that was Pyron's first completion of the year a couple of plays ago to Gilbert. And it's an option keeper again, but this time McKenzie takes him down after a short game. So it's going to be second and goal for the Griffins. I think that was the same play they came back to, Jeff. One, one thing you got to be a little wary of, you, a week ago you started the game with three McKenzie quarterbacks. Now you got two, for the Wildcats. and you're going to be running second the football down. with Pearson quite a bit tonight, evidently. Yep, and you see all, seen all three guys. You've seen Pyron, Dukes, and AK. Second and goal. And that's just straight up the middle, near the end zone, touchdown! Gary Dukes. Touchdown. Walker was in a 6-1 defense, touchdown. Coach. As soon as, as soon as you could crease the line right there, he had a way to the end zone. The end that's his zone. third touchdown two weeks. For the Griffin. He's uh, stepped it up, and the, the Dutchtown offense has stepped it up. They scored seven points in their first two games. Now they're averaging over 30, over 35 in their last two, and they're on the board first as the extra point is on the way. And that's Phillips to kick. No good. It's 6 0. 518 left to go in the first. We'll break. You're watching the Rev, the game of the week. The extra point is no good. You've probably heard that Etel has become Rev. What you may not know is that we're revving up your internet to symmetrical speed for free. Symmetrical speed means that your download and upload speeds are the same, thanks to the Rev All Fiber Network. The new speeds have been applied to your current internet plan, and there's nothing for you to do. Except enjoy shopping, gaming, streaming, learning, and laughing. Learn more at Let'sRev.com. Thanks for being a loyal customer, and enjoy symmetrical speeds from Rev. New name, same company. We're back, and it's 6-0, extra point, no good. And Russell will kick off for the Griffins. It's going to be short. It's going to take a bounce. Get the ball. Tough for grabs, and there's a fight for the ball. Dutchtown says they have it. Of course they're going to say that. No decision from the ref. If we come out the pile with it, Jeff, we got it. I say we, Dutchtown. Referees are discussing it. Got to be touchdown football if they decide. Touchdown yeah. ball. You're right. It's a touchdown football. Jeff, that, that's the second time I'm trying to think of the game that, we, that you and I called touchdown where the ball spun back just like that. Yeah. Was that North Shore week one? I think so, but the ball had a little bit of a, um, a, little bit of a bite to it. That was a Tiger Woods uh, chip up that uh, spun back. And now Dutchtown, they got it into the end zone on their first drive, With and the they have a chance to Dutchtown will start first and get 10. more points as they're going to start near the at red the zone. Yard Ball line. at the 24-yard line, first and 10 for the Griffins. Pyron, shotgun with Dukes. Jeff, that was a Covington game. We wasn't calling the game. I was watching the game. Well, I've seen that. I've seen that in another game. I don't remember which one. And just nowhere to go yeah. as Dukes dances around and takes a loss. So it's going to be second down Dukes and 13. That's a three-yard loss on the play. They, I, I was trying to think of a game where Dutchtown kicked off a lot. Covington was the first game they kicked off a lot. Right. I think they probably only kicked one time in the uh, North Shore game. And then uh, Ponchatoula, there wasn't any balls checking up no, in, in that condition. They just died. Shotgun. And it's Dukes. Short gain. It's going to be third and more than ten as the – Middle of the Walker defensive line tightens up. 
stop in the backfield. This, this has been the, 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 the Mackey slip screen go-to right here, Jeff. Okay. For the Griffins. They were, tr they were doing that with Pyron earlier in the season, but at quarterback, he can't really do that. So he's going to be on the throwing end of it here. Because they got to try to get half of it and make a decision. I don't know if they'll kick from here. Trips right. And there's Mackey. Like you said, cuts inside, 2017. Ball's on the ground, but I believe they whistled it dead. And it's going to be fourth down and short. Probably going to go for it right here. You got most of the yards back. That's basically what happened. And that was nearly a lost ball right there, as you saw at the end of the play. So they're going to go for it. Fourth down. You see Mackey right there. Got, got a backup center in the ball game, Jeff. Okay, that's something to watch for. That would be Lewis Osborne, 54. They're going to call timeout, Jeff. Yeah, there's one second left. Timeout. So it looks like Dutchtown's going to call timeout. We're going to keep it here. And let's talk about uh, the, the non-district the non -district results from last week in the District 5-5A, five, five the games from Week 5. Dutchtown, of course, had the win over Carver that we talked about. And Walker, you see at the bottom, they had a Thursday night game. They beat Bel Air 42 to nothing. I did the De La Salle East Ascension game, and East Ascension nearly pulled it out at the end. They had first and goal, but a fumble, and De La Salle wins. Santa Maul, Coach O, David Oliver ties the record. He'll go for the record tomorrow night as they beat Helen Cox last night. Or last week, excuse me. St. Thomas Moore doubled up Denham. And then Kennedy with the win over Live Oak. That uh, that game against East Ascension and De La Salle that you that you called last week, the, the week before that, De La Salle Gavin rushed Phillips. for 400 yards yeah. Yeah. against uh, St. Charles, and that does not happen against a Wayne Stein defense uh, very often. Dutchtown changes kickers here at the last minute. Still got time, 18 seconds left to play on the play right. clock. Russell was a little nervous, thinking he had to kick it, but they don't. They can take their time. Russell, it's up. It is looks wide left, and it is wide left. Kick is no good. So they changed kickers at the last minute. Walker will take over. Looked like they were going to go with Phillips, and then Russell came onto the field. At their own 20-yard line. And so the special teams misfires on the extra point and the field goal. And so what could be a 10-0 lead is a 6-0 lead with 301 left to go in the first. So now Walker gets their second drive, high snap, pitch out, and good yardage, about six on the play. McClendon on the carry. Because that's McClendon, Clyde McClendon, 485 Stop. rushing yards on the season. So he gets and about, five. they're, they're going to say second five. It's going to be second down from the 25. McClendon looks like a big camper. Yep. They're going to do the reverse and a first down for Ja'Cory Thomas just past the 30-yard line. So everybody focus on McClendon and they pitch it to the receiver. Ja'Cory Thomas, that name, that last name sounds familiar. Ja'Cory yep. Thomas on the carry. I wonder if that's related to Brian Thomas. Walker. Not sure. McClendon, six foot 225, Jeff. That's Cole why I thought he was big just by looking at him. Down, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's one of the bigger backs you're going to see in this season for the Griffins. Shotgun, quarterback, complete. Close to a first down. Price with the completion. And I believe that's Thomas again. Yes, it is. 6'2", 195-pound senior. Good size on him as well. They, they've got, they've got good-looking athletes on this Walker team for sure. You see taken down by number 22 for the Griffins, Carter Hanbury. First down, so first down as they get to the 42-yard line. I don't know if they want to throw Hanbury's way too often tonight, Jeff. There's a pitch. McClendon had a steam. Gets about six or seven. They're running a quick toss to the trip side, which they, that means they're counting on their wide receivers, which their wide receivers are bigger than all DBs over there. 
and doing a good job of blocking on the edge. Cole Langwa came tackle. in and helped out on that tackle down. from his cornerback spot. Second but it's down. second and three after the seven-yard gain by Clyde McClendon. And they're going to give it on the jet sweep and a first down. That's Thomas. So I guess you're, we can expect a big dose Thomas of Thomas and McClendon here tonight, Coach. Yeah. You know, they, they keep running that toss uh, to the trip side, and it'll be a, a, a halfback pass before too long. Or they'll fake that toss in, in the wide receiver, then somebody will go up top. We will see as it's first down into Griffin's territory. And a pass incomplete. Got in the hands of Warren Young Jr., but it was a little wide. That would have been a, a good gain on first down, but falls incomplete. It's second down and 10. Second down. Uh, yeah. Quarterback threw it on the out of bounds side right there. Would have been a good throw and catch. And the pass this time is complete. Close to a first down. Once again, Warren Young Jr. Warren Young. So you see on the replay right here is they're looking left all the way and the catch by Young and then taken down by Mackey. It's going to be third and inches. And quarterback sneak. And Hayden Price at quarterback. It looks like he's got to buy a yard or two. Just a surge up in front of Agu and Josh Lewis, Price and it's a first down. I was flipping through my notes to see who we had Griffin listed D. as the offensive coordinator because you got Chad down, Mahaffey, Walker. and I'll talk about that in a second, Jeff. As first down, quick pass to Young, and he breaks a tackle or two and gets – Close to the 20, they're going to say he stepped Price's out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. Uh, Josh Tomplin, a uh, former faculty member and coach at Dutchtown High, is now down, at Walker. Walker. Left Donaldsonville, was over at Donaldsonville with the head baseball coach. And he may be assisting Mahaffey calling plays tonight for Walker. Yes, we were both able to talk to him before the game. Good to see him out here tonight. Second down, fake. Going deep up top, contact and a flag as Burrell made contact. And so I believe there's going to be some uh, a penalty right here, probably pass interference with 14 seconds left to go in the first. That's, that's, that's a rough call on, on AK. Yeah. Because he did make contact. Did make there was no doubt about it. So, but but it's almost like the wide receiver ran into him, and and he's allowed to be in that right. area as well. The, he has the right to be there, but the the receiver kind of did run through him. But the, a lot of times when you see the contact, you're automatically going to call defensive pass interference. Says on first down, trying to set up the corner. And pushed out of bounds Ooh. by Langua as a good job by the DB there, number one Jones, um, being able to to get through the block and help push out the receiver. Jeff, I had flashbacks. I don't know if you watched the San Francisco game the other night, but the Los Angeles Rams threw a quick screen and San Francisco took it to the house. Six plays on a very similar play right there. It's second down, maybe the final play of the quarter, and it's going to get inside the five. It's going to be third down and short as we go to zero on the clock. Our score at the end of the first is 6 nothing touchdown over Walker. We're going to keep it here as they change sides, and we're going to talk about the 5-5-A five, five records as we talk about this is the first district game. You have the matchups that we're going to talk about later. Denham and Live Oak, Walker and Dutchtown and EA and Santa Mar. But Denham and Walker lead the way with a 4-1 four and one, four and one record. Live Oak and Santa Mar have a 3-2. and two. 
Dutch Town has a two and two, We'd like to thank and the East Ascension with one and four. With the but the thing is about these cool. numbers is they don't really mean anything as it's going to be hard to figure out who is the top dog in the district right now because everything is very fluid. Walker looks like a very good team, but Dutchtown is leading right now after the first quarter, and they are a much improved team after the first couple of games that we covered this year. Yeah, Jeff, in, in, the, in my pregame, I was talking, and I thought the winner of this game would have the upper hand and uh, the district action, you know, after the first couple of weeks, thought Denham Springs and Walker would have the edge, and Walker's four and one and lost a tough game to Kentwood, twenty to nineteen, and and Kentwood, is, while a one A program, is still a outstanding football team. So I still believe the winner of this game will have the upper hand. It's third and short, and I'll bring up one other thing possibly after this play. Pitch out, McClendon stood up, close to a first down. This may be a fourth down and short. As we wait for that, one thing I'm going to bring up, East Ascension at the bottom, they're one and four. And that's more a product of their schedule. As you see the replay, it's going to be close to a first down, but it's going to be fourth and short. So one thing I want to bring up about East Ascension, one and four, but they're, they're a wild card, and they could, they're, going to, they're going to play Santa Ma, and they could win that game right there. We don't know what to expect from them on fourth and short. As five seconds on the play clock. Pitch. McClendon cuts inside, stood up, and he's not going to get into the end zone, but he needs to just get a yard. And Dutchtown says they stopped him. And the officials agree it's a fourth down stop at the goal line. Stop by. The so the defense. entire Griffin defense, as Ted Babin would say, a host of Griffins. They, are, 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 well, let's see. Let's see. They, they They're going to measure it, maybe. The offense on the Walker side is not moving. And here comes Gary Dukes and Pearson Pyron and all the offensive line. They, they insist that they've got it. They made the stop. The ball is at about the one. That's about where they need to go. It looks like the flag on the far side is inside Walker. the one. I, 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 I agree with you, Jeff, but there First was down. certainly no indication yeah. from the officials, and I, I thought for a second that they were going to give it first down to, to Walker. So it's not first and goal. It's first and ten. And the run up the middle by... Gary Dukes gets them a little breathing room, which is all you want to do on first and 10 from the one. So that's a big play right there. I, I don't know if they whispered to him or not, but Gary, the last series, had a, a, a tendency to kind of dance in the backfield, lost, lost two yards on one carry. Dukes uh, he, on carry. You couldn't dance and lose two yards right there because you'd be one yard in the end zone. So that was a good first down run. So it's a gain of four, second and six. And there's Dukes again, cutting the corner, first down, and looked like that could have uh, almost been broken for a longer gain right there. So Dukes, Gary Dukes around the, the right side. player's Drew choice, uh, the fan's choice player of the week last week for WBRZ Hill. makes a big play. First down. Uh, junior first-time starter early in the season. We could see how hard he ran, but he put the ball on the turf a couple games and kind of got in the doghouse a little bit, got frustrated. Uh, but the last two weeks, yeah. Well, Gary Dukes is a big football name around here, and he's uh, keeping it going as Pyron keeps it. And he's going to get about four. As, let's see, they're going to say maybe five. So good yardage up the middle, and uh, this is what Dutchtown's doing, ball control, keep it away from Walker and their explosive offense. And, uh, that was a, and you just can't say, you just can't emphasize how much that stop was important at the goal line. Well, you, you you miss an extra point. You miss a field goal. So, that, I mean, Walker was on the verge of going up 7-6 after being almost down 10 nothing. High snap. And a run as Dukes. They're trying to strip the ball. They're insisting that they got it. I think the whistle may have uh, 
stop forward progress. They, 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 they're going to yank it and pull it. They've seen the film of the first couple games where he put the ball on the ground, so Walker's not going to waste any time yanking on it. Yep. It's third and two as they're going to mark it at the 26. They need to get to the 28 to get the first down. Clock running, 8.50, 6 nothing. Dutchtown leads Walker. Opening night, 5-5-A, Thursday night football. Hand off. Uh, don't think so. I think he's short. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think you can uh, give it to him this time. Earlier on fourth down, Dutchtown maybe got a charitable spot on the run by Pyron, but they're not going to get the spot this time. Just not not close enough. And I believe Roussel is going to come in to punt. So he gets it away, and it's a, it's a decent punt, and a good job. I believe that's Dukes that made the tackle on Thomas. Ja'Cory Thomas. Well, he was credited with, with a tackle Walker. last week, Jeff. So he did a Gary good job Dukes because if he gets past Gary Dukes, he might be. You get that guy in space, and he can probably uh, do some damage right there. I think that was the tipping point when people saw two touchdowns and 167 yards and one tackle. That put him over for player's choice. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, that lets you know you're playing both sides of the football So or special teams. Yep. So it's first and ten, and Hayden Price still at quarterback. McClendon in the backfield for Walker. Ball in Griffin territory. Price, McClendon, and a big scrum up the middle after about a three-yard gain. You, know, you look at def Dutchtown's defensive line. Uh, Cozy, uh, Bar Barron was not a nose guard to start. Braylon Richards was, was not a starter. He was coming back from injury. That's two guys playing out of position on the defensive line. Yeah, there's a couple of changes over the last couple of weeks. And on second down, quick throw. Bowie with the coverage. Falls incomplete. Looks like number 22 or 12 workman. Maybe that was McClendon, the intended receiver. My bad. Well, Bowie, you, you, you seem like if you, if you just watch the football, you're going to see Bowie somewhere around it, Jeff. Yeah. Every time he comes in, he seems to get the call. I would, so, think, I would think Walker's in four-down territory again right here. Ball at the 46. Need to get to the 39. Clock stops 7-16 before the half. Shotgun in movement. Ooh. Did they get the timeout? Dutchtown out? got timeout. called timeout before the movement, Jeff. Yes, Dutchtown called a timeout. I believe that's going to be their second timeout. Second and we'll keep it here. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Dutchtown. And let's look at what they've done over the last five seasons. And they have, of course, that playoff tradition. And they're trying to make it to the postseason again this season. They're 2-2. Two and two, But last year, 5-5 five and five went to Acadiana and lost. In 2020, they had the win over... Terrebonne, but then lost in the second round. 2019, that was a heartbreaking loss to Ruston. And in 2018, it was the was also five and six, making it to the by district round and losing. And in 2017, they had the win over Slidell, I believe, that season. So they've a uh, they're their playoff the playoff tradition here at Dutchtown is third down pressure, and it's up and nearly picked off. And incomplete. That Bowie was McCaffrey. Had, Bowie had pressure. McCaffrey nearly came up with that ball, though. It was overthrown. Yes, he did. As you see, McCaffrey in the secondary. Three guys in the vicinity. And it's going to bring a fourth down. They're going to choose to punt. Well, this is, this is fake punt territory right here, Jeff. Even with seven yards to go. Ponchatoula pulled one off against Dutchtown week two. 
That led to their first the, points the, of the night. The Hoodads had one run against them on Sunday across the pond. Good snap. Gets it away. And Mackey says get away. Mackey, get, Mackey got lucky right there, Jeff, because that ball. That could have uh, bounced inside the 10. Yep. It checked up as as in not spun back, but Young checked spun. up. So the ball just kind of went straight up and straight down. So there's 657 left to go in the second quarter. Line. Our score, well, six to ten. nothing. Dutchtown with the lead. I'm Jeff Porsche. Patrick Email with you. Dutchtown scored on their opening drive on a run by Gary Dukes. Extra point missed. Dutchtown then drove down the field and missed a field goal from Roussel. So it remains 6 nothing, right And then Walker drove down the field, and McClendon was stopped at fourth and in inches from the one. And that's where we stand right now, 6 nothing. Pyron getting the signals Three from the seconds. sideline as the clock is going to run out, but they call their final timeout. timeout. And so we'll keep it here for this timeout. And since we talked about... Dutchtown, let's talk about Walker. And uh, Walker under Mahaffey, they're still a kind of a work in progress. As last couple of years, they've missed the playoffs, kind of rebuilding the program after some uh, troubles in the past. As uh, But they did make it to the regional round in 2019, and they were playoff teams in 18 and 17. Yeah, you got the COVID 1 and 7 in there, Jeff, and uh, – Three and si three and six last year. Well, they they already exceeded that win total. Yeah, but they were they were in, in the, the two five a district for what I mean. We we had I say we Dutchtown High had Catholic High in the district and Walker had Zachary and Scotlandville. So pretty tough two five a district here in Baton Rouge area. That's right. First and ten. Dukes has it and tripped up at the line and short gain as it looks like 41 with the tackle Dante Flowers at his nose tackle position. Basically just hit the ground and uh, reached up and grabbed his leg. So it's going to be second and seven. Good shot at, of Gary Dukes right there. Making a pile at the line of scrimmage has been a, a technique used by many defensive coordinators. Yep. Haven't seen AK using the offense a lot here so far. Second down and a good run by Dukes. And with this type of running. Got a first down, Jeff. With this type of running, you don't really need to bring in AK a lot as Dukes is kind of carrying the load right now. Good shot right there by the sideline camera. Good job. And a good job standing your ground and not ducking away. <laughs> First and 10 from the 30. Dukes stood up and tackled by the guy who stood him up. I believe that's uh, 37 walks, or make that 27, excuse me. No, it is 37. 37. 37, that's Connor Watts, senior linebacker for the Wildcats. Second down. So Dukes and Pyron staying in the backfield. You know, like, I, like I said, hadn't seen a lot of uh, AK out here in the offensive packages. No. Uh, Covington committed to the run quite a bit, and, and Dutchtown was able to hit a couple pass plays. Just uh, kind of kind of tight right there. Not a lot of room to run for Casey McCoy. As had a lot of traffic to get through and just couldn't make it. So that's going to bring up third down and long, third and 11. So after some offensive fireworks in the uh, early series, things have kind of kind of stalled a little bit as it's third and long for the Griffins. Both teams still trying to field each other out here. And they're just going to run. Dukes and tripped up number 44. We'll get credit for the tackle. Dukes around Carter. the left side. He, the ju he just got a shoestring, Jeff. If he doesn't make that tackle, Brings Dukes may pick up another first down. So Dutchtown trying to just run some clock here as we're getting inside of five minutes. 
left to go before halftime. One thing to keep in mind, Dutchtown does get the ball to start the second half. They deferred. As he gets it away, no contact. Bounces. Takes a decent bounce. Takes a decent second bounce. And third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Gets down to the 30. Three-yard line, and it's going to be first and ten. We're getting close to halftime. At halftime, we're scheduled to be joined by Dutchtown High School's Teacher of the Year, Joy Cascio. She's going to talk about the homecoming week, which is next week. Next Friday, we'll have one of our games of the week. We'll be here homecoming for Dutchtown versus Live Oak. And, of course, we'll also be joined by the Dutchtown Sound under the direction of Sheely Bell. First and 10, 33, 6 nothing. And so, big run up the middle and nothing there. McClendon up the middle for Walker. Josh Lewis leads the way for Dutchtown. Short game. It's going to be a gain second of one. Down. It's going to be second down and nine as we're now inside of four minutes. Tackled by Josh Lewis for the Griffins. Sophomore getting some playing time. Big defensive end. Bobbled snap. Keeps it. Throws it. And it's in the vicinity of a receiver. So you're not going to get the grounding. That could have been a disaster as uh, trying to get it to number three. That's Jamari Evans. Yeah, yeah that was just a, almost all the way a disaster. Well, Dutchtown was at least hoping for a intentional grounding, and he just happened to get it in the vicinity. I don't think he was trying to throw no. it to anybody. I think he was trying to get rid of it, and it was called Sunday again. In a, uh, intentional grounding just in the pocket, throwing it where nobody was at by a quarterback. Third and nine, and all kinds of movement. Third and 14. Flag on the play. So legal procedure is the call. Walker, five I don't yards. think Dutchtown was lined up. And they were trying to get some guys lined up. And Walker didn't know the snap count because half the team moved. So the five-yard penalty It's going to be third and 14. Shotgun, good snap that time. Setting up inside pass, complete, breaks a tackle. Won't get the first down. Good job stood up. A handberry. It's going to be fourth down. And so you see, let's look at the replay. Breaks a tackle there, comes inside, and then taken down. And actually Langlois coming in to help out Brings as well. So with 3-10 left to go, Dutchtown still Warren holding Young Walker scoreless. 6-0 in the second. Back deep for the Griffin. Dutchtown's strength has been their defense all season. And they make another stand. Coach Howard does a good job with his guys. High punt. Fair catch called and made at the 31 by Mackey. Caden Mackey. Mackey. Yep, that's a 20-yard a change, change of field line. position for Dutchtown. They've been starting start inside their 10. 10. Uh, their 10 the last two drives. See if they got a two-minute, 45-second uh, drive in them to get some points. Well, if they can do that, they would also get the ball to start the second half. It could be a big change in momentum as basically we've gotten into kind of a stalemate part of the game. Dutchtown looked good early, and now both both teams have kind of kind of struggled on offense. The defense has kind of taken over. And now we see the pitch to Mackey. He's got a chance, He's Jeff. got a long list of blockers, and he gets past midfield. Can he break a tackle? He gets down to the 40-yard line, close to the 40. Let's see the spot. He may have stepped out. He saw the... The handoff to Dukes and then the reverse. Oh, they got to be a, a flag on the ground, Jeff, okay, over here. I was here wondering the 30, why they were coming back. There is a 36-yard line. Must be holding on the edge over there. Oh, that's critical. I didn't see a block in the back. 
That's holding. And that's a shame because he had he had a convoy out there. And you didn't really need to you really didn't need to do anything out there as the blockers were were in charge. You know, kind of kind of like playing chicken when you're a kid. You have just kind of use a tree, use a trash can so the guy doesn't get you, and uh, all you do is get in his way right there. First and about 16. Shotgun. And they fake it to Mackey. Going deep. Wide open. Caught. That's Adams to the 30. Nice cut. 20-15. Tyler Adams. Jeff, you know, early in the contest, I called that slip screen to, to, to Cade Mackey. They faked it. Yes. And... That's why the DB got to be disciplined, and he wasn't right there. And Cade Mackey got up top and long gain. 2.22 left to go. Dutchtown has zero timeouts. Don't really need them right now, though. No, you want to run the clock right here, Jeff. You don't want Walker to have the chance to. And AK's in the backfield. And there he is. Gets a few. Clock will run. That's down in no hurry, like you said, Coach. Morrell on the carry. So you really want to try to score on third down right here, right? Well, you can get a first down, but you, 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 I'm looking at the clock, 25 seconds. There, 145 left to go. AK again cuts down inside the three. That's about where he needs to get for the first down. A little short of the first down. About a yard and a half shy. They're going to mark it at the four. Four down territory either way. AK. Near the end zone. First and goal, 114. Well, they, they didn't. They, oh, it's first and goal from the one. It, it, it's, it's, it's close. I thought, he, I, thought he got, I thought he got in. AK again, waiting for the ball. AK, TD. Touchdown, touchdown. AK, TD. Late flag, unsportsmanlike. So you see the snap and just in there and gets the ball over. And you saw a push right there by 17 on one of the receivers. That was McKenzie on the Walker side. Let's see if they call it on them. Is it going to be offset, Jeff? Because if not, it be. if it's on Dutchtown, then Dutchtown's going to be kicking from their 25-yard line. See what the white hat says. Unsportsmanlike Dutchtown on the kickoff. Okay. I saw some contact by the DB. Penalized. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Extra point coming from Roussel. Up. Good. We'll take a break. It's 13 0 Dutchtown. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. And with a minute and five. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Hollis Orthodontics, Ada Law Firm, Raising Canes in Prairieville, Ross Downing, GMC, SEC Eating and Air, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Advantage Therapy, Beak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffin's Sports Medicine Program. So Dutchtown up 13 to nothing. Porsche an email with you. And uh, a little bit of a surprise. Walker, at least in the non-district play, looked like they would be one of the strong teams, one of the possible favorites. But right now, Walker coming in and shutting out and looking very good. And so the kickoff, this is important that they get it downfield. And it's going to be taken at the 40. So Walker will have good field position if they hold on to it. They're going to be into Griffin territory. Carson nice Rocker return retiring. by Carson Rocker, senior wide receiver. So the unsportsmanlike penalty is going to cost Dutchtown a good field position and a possible uh, 
scoring opportunity for Walker right here. Well, you you back that you back that spot up at the 44 at the 46 to 15 yards and it puts them at the 39 instead of already in Dutchtown territory 46 yard line so let's see if Walker can put together a scoring drive right here and get it close if Dutchtown can hold they get the ball in the second half ball low and incomplete intended for Young. Incomplete. Reminder, halftime, that's sound young. performance and an interview with Joy Cascio at homecoming next week cover. versus Live Oak. Second down. Second and 10. 53 seconds left. Walker, by my account, says all three timeouts remaining, as you see on the graphic. Second and 10. Shotgun. Throwing right. Short again. Under pressure that time. Strong safety off the edge. Intended for Thomas. Let's see, that was pressure from Hanbury. Langwell in the coverage. So now third down. And, uh, third down, Walker. Got to make a stand right here. This is possibly two down territory for Walker. I don't, I don't see them punting right here. No, they. Three receivers right. Shotgun, quarterback, passes right, caught, first down. Warren Young Jr. with the catch. Three hundred yards receiving on the season. Hanbury. And Burrell on the tackle. And so you see tackle made First by down, Hanbury, and, and a timeout, timeout. has Wildcat. been called. And we'll keep it here. And, again, we'll talk about what's going on at half. It's a homecoming here at Dutchtown. And across town, you got the big game tomorrow night as you have EA Santa Ma. This version will be played at the pit. And uh, while while this game is taking place, both teams are having their pep rallies going on at Enjoy their stadiums, that and, uh, and a big tradition continues here in Ascension to Parish. Yeah. Big game tomorrow. They had the golf Visit tournament Stone today. I think East Ascension uh, won the golf tournament, but I'm not 100% sure. Lots of, lots of traditions that we're going to talk about tomorrow night. Coach Swack and I will be out there to cover that one. Split, two left, two right. Setting up the screen off the ground and going nowhere. And again, guess who? Hanbury. All over the field. That's a great catch. That, that ball was a football away from being a football on the ground. A flag on the play down there. Let's see what that flag be. on the play. Hard to see the flags. Sometimes you have to turn around and look around columns here at the Dutchtown press box. And Dutchtown's kind of backing up. And it's going to be against them. Personal foul. That's 15. Oh, boy. So that's a couple of personal fouls that have affected Time this, out uh, Walker. this drive right here. And since, we, since we're talking about the Rev game of the week, let's talk about the upcoming schedule for our Rev games of the week. And, of course, this week it's doubleheader week, Thursday, Friday. And... Live Oak, or excuse me, uh, you know, you have the next week, Live Oak against Dutchtown and Walker at East Ascension. And then two weeks down the road, Dutchtown at Santa Ma. And then you'll have East Ascension's homecoming, and that'll be against Denham Springs. And so those games on Rev Sports 1 and Rev Sports 2 on YouTube and, of course, replayed on Rev TV 4. And, of course, we're not done with our games of the week this week. After tonight, as we talked about, the game, East Ascension at the pit against Santa Monica. First and 10 at the 20 when we resume. 
Football started last night. There was a college game last night, Jeff, that was uh, due to Hurricane Ian. Yes. So the, the football week, only only night is skipping is Tuesday. This it must week. not be uh, Sun Belt and, uh, and the MAC. <laughs> Must not be uh, picking up those days yet. They usually do. Yeah. UL is usually usually playing on Tuesday nights against somebody. And you get a good Ohio-U-Kent State game every now and then. Yeah. Be, be locked in. Yep. First and 10 from the 20. Clock running. And the pass towards the end zone. Picked. Intercepted. That's not Hanbury That's again. That's Dixon is it? a goo. That's a goo. Oh, he's got he's got blockers, and he cuts back in. He's to the 20, 15 seconds, fourteen. They got a chance. I was about to say I was going to call call Carter Hanbury again, and that was Dixon a goo with the pick and the long return, and what looked like a possible. Scoring drive for Dutch Walker Town. turns Griffin into a possible scoring drive for Dutchtown. As we look at the replay, Price just short of his intended receiver, looking to go to the end zone and good, good vision. Real good vision by Dixon Agu. I, I'm laughing because I know uh, Dixon gets a hard time about his hands, uh, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, he gets talking the last to guys laugh. close to the program. First and 10 from the 30. Could Dutchtown make it a three-score game? Not before they run out the play clock. That's been a problem here. Dutchtown. Probably a product of the new quarterback, Penalized right, Coach? Five yards, delay a game. Do you think it's probably because you got the new offense with the new quarterback in there at Pyron? Even though he's not a new quarterback, it's a new setup this season. Uh, you're still you're still early. You still got a, I mean, Jalen Gibbert. We hadn't seen him play a ton, Jeff. Mm -hmm. And shotgun, looking deep, and going into the end zone post into double coverage. No flag, incomplete. Giving giving Mackey a chance. Seven incomplete. seven seconds left to go in the half. Probably got one, maybe two more hail mary chances down here. For Jeff, I, for, for a couple of weeks now, I've compared the Griffins to, to LSU and uh, this kind of growing on offense and running game improving. You can see kind of the resemblance. Down, and Griffins. that That's a pass that they want Jaden Daniels to throw after a players-only meeting. <laughs> Second down and a whistle. Ooh. Can Pearson get it 35 yards, 40 yards now? It looked like maybe Pearson was going to roll out, maybe go, maybe get a few yards and then uh, get one more shot. Yeah, oh, that or spread out deep. Uh, he tucked it at the second last down. second, Jeff. I, I was trying to, and, of course, now there's only four seconds left to go. So they, they can't kick this. They, they can't get enough yards and get a play to where they can, they can kick it. So they got to uh, use their last play of the half, last play of the game type of – Catch it, pitch it. Four receivers are in. Duke's in the backfield, and they're going to throw it inside to Mackey and see if he can cut in. And one second, there's no timeouts. You hear the fans oh, yelling, timeout, timeout, no more timeouts. So we are going to go to halftime. Our score, 13 to nothing. Dutchtown with the lead over Walker. Halftime show coming up in just a moment. We're going to break right now. 13 nothing, Dutchtown. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Walker. Chris's Specialty Foods has been making Cajun meat products for almost 30 years. We do all the prep work so people can have home cooked meals without spending all day in the kitchen. Everything is done ourselves. With three locations in Louisiana and a fourth in Texas, we needed all of them connected to the same system for point of sale and telephone. Rev Business set us up and it's been a game changer. They have everything as national companies but with real local service. Rev Business is authentic Louisiana, just like Chris's. B.T. Chapman and A.J. Pickett with Advantage Therapy are honored and excited to team up with Dutchtown High School's athletics. At Advantage Therapy, we are dedicated to helping our patients regain the highest possible functional status through one-on-one -on -one patient care. 
Advantage Therapy has spent nearly two decades providing both outpatient orthopedic physical therapy and occupational therapy to the people of Ascension and surrounding parishes. From all of us at Advantage Therapy, Go Griffins! Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyra Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Hi, we are live with the PPTV Network, where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character, and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their record of success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy. Buick GMC Buying Center wants to buy your car. It's fast, easy, and fair. No matter what make, no matter what model, no matter what mileage, the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants it. And we'll pay you cash for it, even if you don't buy from us. It's the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Cash for your car at the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Title Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Title Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Title Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You gotta call. You gotta call Title.
Next, we feature our Griffin Girls as they perform to the Demi Lovato song, Confident. Touchdown Sound and the Griffin Girls. We hope you have enjoyed tonight's performance. Color Guard captains are Ivy Russell and Aria Williams. Co-captains are Kennedy Jared and Sheridan Smith. Griffin Girl sponsors are Joy Turner and Glenda Pavajo. Griffin Girl leaders are Alyssa Email. Co-captains Carissa Drumgirl and Cameron Tremonti. Lieutenant Captain is Milan of Alvarez. And we are back after the great halftime show by the Dutchtown Sound Griffin Girls. I'm Jeff Porsche, and we are now joined for a halftime interview with Joy Cascio from Dutchtown High School. And we're going to talk about homecoming and what's going on there. But there, before we uh, talk about the uh, homecoming events, first of all, we have to I have to amend that we have to, Dutchtown faculty. Teacher of the Year, Joy Cascio from Dutchtown High School. Tell me about that. Uh, were you shocked that you uh, got the award this year? I was definitely shocked. It's a, a huge honor to get that at Dutchtown High School when we have so many phenomenal faculty Tonight's members. Tonight's halftime and is brought to you by Garcia Roofing. So it was a huge honor. Proudly trusted by South Louisiana since 1992. How long have you been there? Garcia I have been at GarciaDidMyRoof.com. Okay, so been a long time coming you've learned a lot over there we're glad to have you for sure but we're here to talk about homecoming too so I'll, I'll stop embarrassing you I know you don't I know you don't want to talk about yourself but let's talk about homecoming because that's going to be next week well I guess the first thing I want to ask it's during fall break week so yeah. it's kind of an awkward week yeah so how do you how do you make adjustments this is the second time that's happened in the years that I've been doing homecoming um and basically the adjustment, the big adjustment we made was splitting up our spirit week. Mm -hmm. So even though this is the Walker game, this was actually day one of homecoming week for Dutchtown High School. So our kids were in their um, 90s outfits. Um, some of them drifted into the early 2000s. but uh, <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, that was a little bit rude of them. That made me feel a little bit older than <laughs> I want it to feel today. Um, but so we have spirit week. Uh, uh, today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is DTHS day. And then we'll pick up on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It also means for a very short, kind of crammed, busy week when we come back from fall break. Right. And uh, the theme to this, uh, to, to homecoming this year, you see is, it right there. Yes. Goblins, ghouls, and griffins. How'd you come up with that? 
So we meet with um, student council members over the summer, and uh, we had had student council members fill out a Google form and recommend themes. And so I had a list of about 12 different themes, and I had probably 15, 20 students who showed up um, in July, and they voted on a theme. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, on that list was not Halloween. Um, and then a, a student in the room said, well, y'all, it's late October. This is the latest homecoming in the year's that I've been here. It's normally late September, maybe first weekend of October. Um, so we've never had a chance to do Halloween because we've never been this close to it. And a student said, well, what about Halloween? And when I tell you that there was an audible gasp in the room of excitement and I knew I had like lost already, you know, I had the theme I was pulling for and yep. I knew it's over. Halloween's got it. Right. And then we just love a little alliteration in our titles. So Goblin Schools go. and Griffins. There That's you go. great. <laughs> We're ah, excited. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> You're going to have the pep rally at that um, on Thursday night, and this is where you're going to have the homecoming the court, court, the court presentation int yes. introduced. So why don't you talk about these girls here and tell us what we're looking at here? Okay, so um, these are some of our homecoming court students, um, young ladies that were uh, nominated by organizations that they are in. In order to even be nominated to be on our homecoming court, students have to have served at least two years of involvement in a club or organization. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I can't tell you off the top of my head which organizations nominated right. each girl, but all of these are girls who are involved um, in our school mm -hmm. and are at things and are committed and dedicated Griffins, and that's how they get here. Okay, so you saw the first group of students right there. This is the uh, second group, and uh, we have a third group that's going to be shown as well, and you can see their names right there. Yes, we have 18 girls total. So how, well, how do you come up with 18? What's is it? Does it have to be 18, or is it just kind of a It, it doesn't have to be 18. Um, we've had some bigger courts. We've had some smaller courts. Um, it, a lot of it depends on just where the natural break is in the vote. Okay, so the traditional thing is during our game of the week, next week against Live Oak, we mm -hmm. will crown – the queen at halftime, yes. correct? And then when does the king crown? The king gets crowned at our dance, at the homecoming dance, which is Saturday night in our cafetorium from 7.30 to 10.30. Tickets are on the sale now. Um, and the students All were asking me, oh, well, why are we doing it at the dance? And I said, well, we've always done it at the dance. Right. We did it at this pep rally because we didn't have a dance and it was right. COVID. So there's been lots of confusion this year because so many of our students have never done a traditional homecoming because of COVID. Yeah. So we're really excited to be bringing all these events back and getting right. back into normal. My daughter is really excited too. She's going to go and she's, this is her first dance. And so it's a lot of people's first dance. So yeah. we're glad to have that. So, so exciting. Exactly. So thank you for the, the, the time that you dedicate to make this happen. And uh, thank you for coming out here and joining us here tonight, Joy. Oh, it was no problem. It was a pleasure. Thank you. So Joy Cascio, the DTHS Teacher of the Year, as you see right there. And homecoming next week, game of the week, and we are ready for the second half. So, Joy, you're not going to do any uh, color analysis for us, right? I mean, I've told you for years I'd be great at it, but you I, don't, I don't think I'm ready for it today. <laughs> well, Patrick's not ready either, and he does it, so it's all right. <laughs> so, all right, thanks for having me, Jeff. All right, thank you. <laughs> all right, we're ready to go. Dutchdown gets the ball to start this second half. Kickoff coming from number 84, Niall Allen. And it's a whistle, so it's not the kickoff. Well, it does. Give me a chance play. to defend myself. Yes. Man. So, you know, it's all in good fun. Walker, yeah, well, you know, Lyle says she did great. That's because she got practice last week. Oh, okay. Well, she got practice with D-Town Voice last week. Well, that's good. Had to get ready for the real show. Niall Allen. Ah, all right, Walker. we're ready to go again as they're going to be penalized five yards, and we're going to start from the 35 now. So that's how we'll get better field position. And they had a great first half. Shut out the Walker offense that has been playing very well. And right. they uh, got 13 points to start this game. They had 13 nothing. It's obvious that they left one point on, the, uh, on there by uh, – Missing an extra point, missed a field goal. Maybe points at the end of the half right here. Could they have a bigger lead, Jeff? They need, they need to go down the field and score and make it 
a three-possession game. That's uh, very critical as a three-possession game will make it really tough for Walker to, to wear, work out of the hole. But Dutchtown had a little trouble there getting out of the uh, the starting gates on that return as Duke steps out of bounds. Really just kind of an awkward spot for that kick to land. And there you saw the the not great field position for the Griffins. First and ten from the 17. Halftime score just sent in to us. Denham Springs leads Live Oak 7 nothing. That's a little bit of a surprising score. Yes. First down keeper, Pyron, and he gets a first down. That gets him out of the hole in a hurry. That's an 36. 18-yard game. On the keeper. Well, the, the, the half that Duke's had in the first well, half, we talked about picks up uh, where he left off last week. First and down and for the Griffin. Fake him a handoff, and Pearson can take it for 18. That's, that, that helps the offense. So first and 10 from the 36. Officially a 19-yard gain. Now Pyron's going to wait for blockers. Doesn't really materialize. Gets a short gain. How many passes does Dutchtown throw in the first half, Jeff? Pyron on the keeper. I want to say Five? Five? They threw the long one. All leads the way for they threw the, the long one. Had a, the inside screen. They did it twice with Mackey. They, no they, game. they threw the incomplete uh, in the end zone. I thought that was four. Yes. I had to over on that four mm -hmm. for the game. Well, Pyrot has experience. And uh, it kind of keeps the uh, defense honest if you throw a few more passes here and complete them like they did and show that you can – you have a threat. You also had that long pass downfield over here on this side on the opening drive, the the uh, the long pass downfield. That was one. The Mackey, the Mackey was one. Adams was another. So that's four. Gary Dukes with the carry. As you see the carry the right there by Gary Dukes. Rocker. And it's going to bring up third down and five. But on the opening drive, one they the also had a long pass tackle. downfield. That was Jalen. That was Jalen Gilbert yeah. for the long first down. That's game. one. So. Third Regardless, it's third and five. Griffin. Be and interesting now. to see the, if uh, Teddy Bridgewater, that quarterback with the glove on his right hand. <laughs> third and five. Could be anything right here. And it's Dukes. And it's a first down. That's a lot more. Down at the 46 the into... Wildcat territory. That, that, that's called the nub side. They got the trips to the, the wide Griffin. side, and that's the nub side. They got a tight end over there, Jeff, and the Dutchtown's able to get the edge. Oh, I'm sorry they had a wide receiver over there. It seemed like the nub side because he went downfield quite a ways. You saw Big Wayne McKinney pulling from his left tackle position, had a key block downfield. And now first down, quick pass. Caught. Adams. Got it to Tyler Adams. Gets good Ball yardage on first complete. down. And so if you can just get those passes and you complete them, and one of the things with that old short pass to Adams, when you had the long Game pass downfield, down that was because you faked that pass, and they got to they got to honor that because they're able to complete it, and that's when they went downfield and got the long pass. Yep. Second and four, and there's nice another cut. first down. Dutchtown driving with authority on this opening drive. First down run by Pearson Pyron. McKenzie and Rocker. So good gain right there as we see on the replay. Just good blocking right now by this offensive line. Dutchtown steadily pulling guard tackle or tackle tight end, guard tight end. So first down inside the 30, 28 yard line. Pyron again good breaks a tackle. Arm. Yeah, good stiff arm, I was about to say. Then he's brought down by number 27 for the Wildcats. Around the right side. As make, that's a Merrick Hall with the tackle. But you see, like you said, a good stiff arm right there. Got good four or five yards out of it after that. Second down for the Griffins. So that's a, it's going to be second and six. And a quick pass deflected, uh -oh. and it's up for grabs. Incomplete. On the ground. 
That, that was dangerous, Jeff. Oh, that could have been six Back points right there if it would have gone in the right spot. Yeah, I uh, I was Looking. about to say this is a big drive, confidence builder for Dutchtown. But boy, if that yeah. ball the goes the other direction, it could have been a huge confidence builder for for Walker. Look Momentum it. is so fragile, Jeff. Yes, and it looked like a quick slant to Adams on the play, but it was blocked away at the last second. Third and six, two down territory. Pyron keeps it and gets a couple. It's gonna be fourth and four. I don't know if they're gonna bring. Roussel in to kick the field goal. They're right in the, the middle of the field, but it would be about a 42-yard attempt. They're going to go for it. Roussel does have the leg. He missed one earlier. Shotgun, Dukes. And that, there's movement. That's not enough for a first down. Nope, but that helps. It's going to be fourth and one. Yes. Flag on the play. And the clock is stopped with 7.52. Another thing important out here, Coach, if they can make it a two-possession game, they've eaten over four minutes off the clock already, and that's one of the things that Coach Mastretta definitely is trying to do with his offense. Well, for the Walker group. has the ability with Thomas and Young, those, those wide receivers. They're yes. athletic enough to. AK gets it this time. Cuts outside. 10-5. First and goal. So they're saving... They're saving AK for the red zone plays, it looks like here, Coach, and he does a good job here again. Well, he's a little bigger back than than Dukes, but Dukes runs hard. I don't think they're afraid to give it to Dukes inside. Uh, and, and Dukes is back in, by the way. And he got the first touchdown. But it's just another weapon. Well, we talked about the, the, the three-headed monster to a degree. First and goal from about the five. Pearson's going to keep it. He's going to turn the corner, and he's going to score easily. 19 to nothing. Who would have thunk it, Coach? Touchdown, Dutchtown. That, that is a, a drive that Walker talked about at halftime, thinking, hey, defensively, we got to get a three and out and get the ball back to offense and make this a one-possession game early in the third quarter, and here they are. Halfway through the third quarter, and they're down three scores. The and the little chips by McKinney and the receiver downfield were just enough to spring Pyron. Didn't need a full block, but just enough to get him away. And Russell kicks the extra point. It's in. It's good. And it's 20 to nothing, Griffins. 7-13 left to go in the third. We'll break. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Dutchtown. Chris's Specialty Foods has been making Cajun meat products for almost 30 years. We do all the prep work so people can have home cooked meals without spending all day in the kitchen. Everything is done ourselves. With three locations in Louisiana and a fourth in Texas, we needed all of them connected to the same system for point of sale and telephone. Rev Business set us up and it's been a game changer. They have everything as national companies but with real local service. Rev Business is authentic Louisiana, just like Chris's. And we're back. It's 20 to nothing. Dutchtown over Walker. Walker coming in 4 and 1. Dutchtown 2 and 2. But as we said, the non district records don't mean a thing as Dutchtown is in the lead and they are on fire the last couple of weeks. And now we're ready for the kick. For Dallas and Brown, back deep for Walker. And a short kick, 28-yard line. Dances around, gets to the 32, not much. Rocker on the return. As the return made by Carson Rocker, Mackey a DB, stop. for Walker. Walker will start and first and so 10. Walker starts first and 10, their first drive of and the second half with line. Hayden Price at quarterback. He's gone the distance here tonight. Yeah, Jeff, I'm picking up on a little thing. Just really jogging off the field. Uh, covering kickoffs is is uh, Dukes. He, he looked like maybe he took a a knee to the thigh or something. Kind of came off a little bit gimpy. We'll see if he's back in on the next series on offense for the Griffins. Price was a little inaccurate in his last uh, couple of series as he pitches it out to McClendon. Gets a few yards, and that's a goo on the tackle. That's a little toss sweep they ran early in the game when, they, when the game was, was 6 nothing. I don't know if they can run that play on a regular basis and, and get away with it. 
Second down, Walker. If Dukes is injured, we'd expect Jamil Kemp to kind of take his place. On second down, quick pass complete. And blocking down the sideline, close to a first down. It's going to be third down. Price Another halftime pass. score, Zachary 14, Complete. Woodlawn 6. So Warren Young. as 4-5A has begun. Talk, earlier, Jeff, when we were talking about the season and you know, the, the, the new the playoff Wildcats. format, are you familiar with the, the new playoff format? Because they got some different teams and select. Right. I know I had not completely set up with it yet as on third down. I think McClendon got it. Who made the tackle. But that's something we're going to get into as the season goes on, I'm sure. You know, I, I hadn't the seen the, the early Walker. PowerPoint, but you know, in the past that select Agu division only had tackle. like 16 teams or 12 teams in it. Right. Now you, you have 24, those teams, 24. those magnet teams and some other things happening yeah. in there. That's Wood, a handoff off the middle. Woodlawn's in there now as a magnet. Yeah, there's a couple of teams that kind of surprised me. I believe Southside and some of the uh, some of the uh, Lafayette Parish schools are there too. Sure. On on the non-select side, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not sure if they're going with 36 teams or 32 teams, or they're going down to 24 like they're doing with the select side. That's what I'm not sure of. Second and seven, 5:47 left to go. Pressure gets away, throws downfield. Nope. And short of his intended receiver. That's been the story here in the second quarter. They try to get it to Thomas. They've got some good receivers in Thomas and Warren Young Jr., but he's just not making the connections. He's been short on a few plays. Then he, one of the plays, one of the passes was short and was picked off by Goo. I think that I think that play was supposed to go to Young. He was running across the field as Price rolled out to the left, and he pulled up and threw it to Thomas. But Young looks like he's walking a little gingerly, Coach. Yeah, he is. See him number 13 on the far side. This is the nub side right here with the tight end I was talking about earlier. I got you. Shotgun looking left all the way. And off target but caught. Wow. That pass was nearly out of bounds. I thought he dove out of bounds when he caught it, Jeff. But Don't know if we can get a replay here or not. Being on the far side of the field might be difficult. But they get the benefit of the doubt. They probably owed one. As uh, Dutchtown did on their opening scoring drive on a fourth and one. Got a charitable spot. Shotgun, handoff, not much. Good job. There's a goo down at the bottom of the pile. A goo is everywhere here after the second quarter, Coach, as uh, that was McClendon on the carry. Uh, Bowie's right there with Blake him. Bowie. In on the tackle. We've seen a lot Second of Bowie, down. we've seen a lot of Agu, and we've seen a lot of Hanbury. No big surprises right there. Second down, McClendon. Just power rushing, and not a lot. That's Agu again down at the bottom of the pile. Yeah. Well, Maybe they shouldn't the be running towards Agu. Well, you got Mackey, the cornerback up top, him and Leading the way for the Griffins. Uh, Langwa. Third down. They do a good job at corner and locking those guys down. We've seen Langwa make plays all season. Yes, we have. Looked like they were in a hurry. Now they'll get the signals from the sideline. 429, 14 left on the play clock. 20 nothing Dutchtown. Shotgun looking right. And caught short of a first down. Looks like it's going to be at the 24-yard line. That's Jamari Evans on the catch. They got it. They, I thought that was going to be picked, Jeff. If the, he threw it, where the, the, the wide receiver had to come back to the football. If he throws it where the wide receiver is at, I think it's picked. Yeah. Hanbury may have had another one. Hanbury and Langwa in the vicinity, fourth and three. This could be a big play right here. Dutchtown can make a stop right here. They could be in pretty good shape. A jet sweep outside. Pressure. Drop. Not going to convert. That is. AK with the tackle. The Furman commit. AK Burrell with. Thomas. 
Around the left side. They, go, Walker. they go to Ja'Cory Thomas. You, get, you got to go with your best athletes on that fourth down, but the they run right into down. maybe – Dutchtown's best best athlete on, on defense. Well, you got a couple the of them, but uh, AK is definitely one of them. You know, 336 right here, Jeff. And Walker's, you got to think, three more possessions in this ball game. Griffin's if Dutchtown gets a sustained ten, drive, we're going into the fourth quarter, line. Coach. And so you, you, you're down three scores. You, you may only have three possessions. Mm. No turnovers. That's the mantra right here. I don't want to curse it, though. Keeper. Ooh. Breaks a tackle. Look at this. Pearson looking like a fullback. Let's see if we can get the uh, – that was a crease right there. Let's see if we can get a replay on, on, on that oh. one, the way it Up the did, did, did a great job of the, the two linebackers, the two pullers. One blocked out. Want to see that crease right there, Jeff? Yep. Ooh. With help on the tackle. But I tell you what, man. He does a good job running that touchdown. offense, running that option up the middle. Uh, uh, that, that's that's linemen right there. When they look at film and they say, man, you got those guys in space, that's good blocking at second level right there. This doesn't look like the team that we saw against North Shore for sure. This is Kemp. I was telling you about him. Probably going to see some action. Tripped up. Maybe a yard, third and inches. This might be AK time right here. Kemp. On the well, you're, not, you're up 20 to nothing in the second and, and two. And you see the trip right there, and AK is checking in. And Coach McCready in his heyday probably would have been screaming, go up top, go up top. <laughs> but when you're up 20 to nothing, you want to get a first down and move the chains. Right. You haven't seen the Sherry tonight. That might be a little weapon you put in your back pocket for a moment. AK, first down. And, and, you know, one of the differences we're seeing out here tonight, not just a new quarterback, but when we compare well, it to the Pachatula no. game or the North Shore game, that First offensive line is Griffin. looking very, very uh, fluid, very coherent. They're, they're working together. It looks like a lot better here. No doubt. I mean, you, you got McKinney. I think he has a, a, an offer or two on the table. You got Fields, and you keep – you don't want to uh, kind of – Name drop, but, I mean, you're talking a power five commitment. That should be your bread and butter. Yep. The Sherry in motion. And this is a new back in the game. That's a Kedron Harvey. He got a couple carries last week. Yeah, he's a sophomore. He's a really good athlete. You're going to see a lot of in the future as a Griffin. Six yards, second down and four. Yeah. So, six. so you pointed out the Second Duke's the, uh, the Duke's possible injury on the kick return, and he hasn't seen action this drive. You He's jo jogging on the sidelines. There's a Kedron Harvey again. First down, turns the corner. Look at that speed. Goes right into the kicker's net, <laughs> taken down by number 44. Harvey, Coach is probably Carter, and it's good. Right Coach, <laughs> Coach is probably telling him. You know, if you carry the ball in the right hand, you Stop may better step on that guy and you wouldn't be uh, going into the kicker's net. <laughs> oh, no. Didn't see the flag. D Duke looks like he's moving pretty good on the sideline, Jeff. Yeah. Just give him a little breather right here. It looks like Kemp and, and Harvey got it under control right now, even though there's a flag. It's second and 15. What did, what did the White have called? Holden? I holding. believe so. Yep. Second down and long for Dutchtown. Keeper. And can't get outside. That's 37. Takes him down. On the keeper. And that's Connor Watts on the tackle. So it's going to be third and long. And a good, solid drive could be in danger because of a penalty as we get inside of 38 seconds. So you could wind up potentially still running out the quarter. If you don't throw it here, you will run out the quarter. Dukes is back in the game. Sprint draw. No, oh. keeps it. Up for grabs, incomplete. And that'll stop the clock with 20 seconds, 19. 
So Aron's pass incomplete. Interesting call. I mean, you you had the Brings option of just uh, conceding with a run and running out the Rousseau clock. Now you got 19 seconds left. Pass would have been well short of a first down, but I think the uh, D line kind of kind of noticed it and blew it up before it could even happen. Uh, they, they ran that sprint draw. That was a, the play they ran in, in, in the last couple of games, Jeff. And Coach Mastretta's talking to Pearson, and I just wonder if that was a read that, that Pearson made the call on the rollout. And it, it could have been an option. And it's nearly blocked, and it's going to take a great Dutchtown bounce inside the 10 to the 8. And uh, you got to credit Roussel right there because the pressure was coming in Roussel's from the right down. side, and he just pooched it left now as fast as he could. I, I, I thought the actual guy actually ran into him. Didn't see a flag. Didn't see no the contact. Flag. I was watching the punt. I thought they ran into him a little bit. But eight seconds left to go in the half. So I'm just wondering. I've never seen a read on the sprint draw. So that sounds kind of crazy. But you know, if you run the football, you don't get it. The clock is running. You run out the clock, and now you're punting on the first play of the the fourth quarter instead of. The second to last play of the third quarter. This is possibly the last play of the third quarter as it goes down to the seven. Make it a six yard line. Roussel with the clutch punt. Shotgun. Pass. Incomplete. Still have time for another play. Trying to get to Evans' Mike's coverage by Langwa. Look at the Evans. replay. Cole Langlois. Langlois right coverage. in his pocket. Second down, Walker. So four seconds left to go. See a good shot of Evans right there. 20 to nothing. Barring a strange play, Dutchtown will have a 20-point lead going into the fourth quarter. Pitch. McClendon outside. Great play by Cade Mackieko. Yeah, and they, they just can't. They, they have done a great job McClendon not letting him get free side. as the clock runs out, and that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. Stop 20 to nothing Mackie. is our score, and we're going to keep it here. And that'll do it for your third and, quarter. And uh, let's talk about the games the that are taking place in 5-5-8 five, five, this Walker. week. There's three games. Zero. This is game number one, and there's actually two of them happening Tonight, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Walker Dutchtown is the one in action right now. Denham and Live Oak and another low scoring game. 7 0 Denham with the lead. Live Oak was kind of kind of expected to be one of the bottom teams in the district, but they're hanging with Denham, who is possibly one of the early favorites. So that just goes to show you not, you don't know what's going to happen in this district yet. EA and Santa Mar, that's going to be the game that everybody's looking forward to tomorrow night. Uh, I was under the impression, first start when you play at Livingston School on the Thursday, that it's because the Livingston Parish Fair, they like them to play on Thursday instead of Friday. Is it the fair this weekend, or, or is Dutchtown playing on Thursday because of EA Santa Mar on Friday? I don't, I don't know. I think it's probably because of the fair. Um, Dutchtown does play some Thursday games every now and then. They like to do that week 10. They're doing that week 10. I don't know that it's – I don't think they're – Doing the early well, early uh, weekend for any particular reason, other than possibly maybe helping out Walker here. Fourth quarter ready to begin. Third and seven. Price at quarterback looking right deep, up for grabs and contact and a catch. Offensive pass interference. Well, are there any no flag? But there's definite contact. Jacory Thomas took the DB down. No flag. Langwa. Incidental contact, I guess, is going to be the decision. Well, that's look. I mean, Langwa is right there. This seemed like he got pushed down. That wasn't a very good shot of. Yeah, you couldn't uh, really tell. Couldn't really tell far away. And there's a run. McClendon. Dutchdown's D line has stopped the run all night. And they've made lots of stops on McClendon. And you're talking about McClendon looking like the, the big body the running back. And he hasn't been able to Darius get any Jones. steam. 
the edge play is doing a good job of, of forcing the football the right at Darius Jones Second on the tackle. You can't run the ball too much more, would you? Second and nine. Screen backside. On the ground and nearly Ooh. picked. I don't know if that, that hit the ground before it popped up in the air, but I'll tell you what, Baron Cozy nearly had a – a moment of glory. That was that was a good uh, that was a good call though. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they had a shot McCaffrey. at it. McCaffrey does a great job of uh, feeling that. Coach, that's a, actually that was Jones who had the, the, the shot at glory right there. Bo Excuse both me. of them were right there. Jones was coming for the the, the tip ball, while well, McCaffrey read it. Third and nine. Pressure, he's got a lane, and he commits and doesn't get it. Great job. Open field tackle. Anson McCaffrey. Check him out from that right outside Rice. linebacker spot. Stayed loss. in his lane and kept him from getting tackle away. Look at him spying the quarterback, and he's got him. No, not a chance. Chad good, good, uh, good shot right there. Chad Mahaffey hates to punt the football right here. I know he just he's looking at that clock and counting Warren possessions. Young in to kick it away. Yep. We told you. Walker. We talked about three maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, back deep for the Griffins. Dutchtown is going to at least get two off the clock right here, most likely. Every first down, two more minutes go off the clock. Whistle. Delay. Flag delay. Delay a game. Walker, we haven't looked at Walker's yard. schedule yet, but they've had a really, a really decent schedule, and uh, their only loss is to Kentwood, a 1A team. But uh, they've they've had some nice victories. Both of these teams like to play the North Shore 6-5A schools, and so they actually had a common opponent. Ponchatoula was the, yeah. the week one for, for Walker, but... You want to use the transitive property, but you can't because of the conditions that yeah. Dutchtown played Ponchatoula in. AK is going to let that one roll. He went back to receive that punt instead of Mackey. Young's punt. They kind of alternate back there. I don't know what that rhyme or reason. I'll have to talk to Coach Vito, find out why who he puts who back there. The so 9.50 left to go. All Dutchtown tonight. Walker had one shot at points, had a fourth and one at the two, and Dutchtown made the stop short of the one-yard line on the running back, Clyde McClendon. And now, the, ever since that moment, Walker has not really threatened very much. Nope. They haven't. And there's Dukes, and he's dragged down from behind. Good tackle there by 41. Jeff, this is the time of the ball game where you're expecting Dutchtown to run the football, so you're expecting Walker to commit eight, nine to the run. One or two things. One, if, Dutch, if Dukes can crease one, he's got a chance for a long run. Yeah. And if not, will coach. Um, Tyler Janice, Adams is a guy that you might be looking for. Janice, will he pull it and go up top for the dagger? You got Tyler Adams up top there. The lone receiver. And they're just going to go simple. AK breaks a tackle. First down. Well, it wasn't 60, Jeff. But uh, it was 25. Mm -hmm. AK Burrell with the big run for Dutchtown. So look at the, look at the replay the right Griffin. there. Good blocking downfield. Give credit to Chase Cangelosi from a center spot, number 64. Going downfield and uh, knocking some guys out and springing him for the big game. Nice patient run. 40-yard line and two more minutes will run off the clock. The cherry in motion. Big hole. And that's Lakedron Harvey. Five yards. He got some quality playing time last week and you know, I, I talked Harvey about it the in carry. the post game of when when some of those young guys can get some snaps and 
uh, can push older guys and, and it improves your practice. And I hadn't talked Second to any of the coaches about how their practice down. went this week, but after watching last Friday and the way they performed tonight, I would think they had a good week of practice. They they look like a totally different team from what we saw a couple of weeks ago. I haven't seen Dutchtown since week two because I've been on the road covering other teams. This is just night and day. Second down, handoff. And I believe, let's see. Lagarde. Who is that? That's a new running back. Yeah. Chris Lagarde, senior. All right. Lagarde on the carry. Lagarde getting down. some quality kick carries as a senior. Yeah, he got McKenzie some reps last stop. week. All of them carried. Uh, First down for the group. Four or five of them carried the ball last week. First down. Two more minutes. You didn't get two minutes on that drive because you converted on second down, but still you get the point. They're just eating that clock. Lagarde, another big hole. This offensive line is just mashing right now. Like Coach, Coach Lagarde Venus. Lagarde up the middle. Rocker. Just huge that holes and the five, six yards a shot. Seven minutes left to go. Coach Venus probably headbutting those Second guys down. on Saturday morning, <laughs> fired up the way they've been playing the last couple weeks. Now you got Lakeidra and Harvey back in. I'll tell you what, you didn't know what you had behind Gary Dukes week one because it was basically Gary Dukes and nothing else. Looks like they got some quality backs in the stable here. Cuts outside, stood up maybe a yard or two. It's 21-0. And over in Denham now, so Denham kind of pulling away Harvey from Live Oak as, as expected, perhaps. But uh, that's going okay. to be a few two future opponents third in five down. five a for Dutchtown. It's third down and four, a long four. This is basically five. We're approaching the halfway point. Dutchtown still pitching a shutout, and they have the football. A first down right here could just be too much. As AK is in the backfield now. And they first fake down. it, and that's Maybe a first a down to the 10. Out of bounds and a late flag. Well, if it's holding right there, you back it up, you still get a first down. Flag on the play. Let's see. It's close. Jeff, this is the time where off the offensive linemen – in the olden days, you used to huddle, and you used to be able to say, yep, let's run it, let's run it, let's run it. But you don't even have to do the decoy anymore. They're just pounding Griffins. it. There's a flag, and, of course, it's against Dutchtown. Let's see. I think it's going to be a first down still, Jeff. It's still going to be a first down, which – And actually pushing about 10 yards could help them. Now they got more ground to work from, right? And more clock can run. Yep. Well, you know, when Dutchtown wants Griffin to throw the ball, they, the you, know, you want to throw first it from the 20 and the 15 instead of the 5, Jeff. Yes. Clock at 5.48. And now, who's that in the backfield? Lagarde again. Lagarde, big hole again. And standing up, guys, inside the 5. First and goal for the Griffins. Guard up the middle. Well, one carry puts them back where they were after, before the penalty. So you still get some clock wasted here. So now we're inside of six minutes. Walker on the stop. And the a, touchdown, a touchdown here pretty much is going to put the nail in the coffin. First and goal for the Griffin. So Dutchtown in good shape here tonight. Don't forget tomorrow night we had a great game. EA at Santa Ma. But this one's not over yet. It's still 20 to nothing. First down, Lagarde. Ooh. Lagarde to the low one. He wanted that. Look at that. He said, "Come on, give me that. Give me that." He, I, I love, I love to see fire in these guys. Injury. Who's who's down for the Griffins, Jeff? The Griffin player down. Not sure. Looks like maybe that's in that area uh, number six. Jalen Gilbert. Yep, Jalen Gilbert. Looks like he's up. We would like to thank yeah. Rock Foundation. You're right about that. So, again, we were just talking about it a moment ago. Our game of the week next week, or excuse me, uh, not next week, tomorrow night is going to be the game at the pit as it's going to be EA at Santa Ma. But next week, we talked about it with Joy Cascio at halftime. 
Dutchtown game of the week next week. Live Oak homecoming. And uh, but let's talk about that. That's one of the games next week. And then the uh, other game on Rev, our other Rev game of the week is Walker at East Ascension. So Walker is going to have a tough one in Ascension Parish again. And then Santa Ma is going to be at Denham Springs. And again, one more time, tomorrow night is the game at the pit that everybody's looking forward to. Second and goal for the Griffins. EA at Santa Ma. A must win for both teams. First and goal from the one. Lagarde under center. They're going to push Pyron into the end zone. Touchdown. 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 And it's 26 to nothing. <laughs> Jeff. Wow. I would have lost a lot of money in this game if uh, somebody would ask me, do you think Dutchtown's going to win 26 nothing? Well, it's not over yet. Strange things have happened, but 444 left to go. Dutchtown is in excellent shape. Yeah, I would say they're in total control the way that defense is playing. Absolutely. Yeah. Extra point on the way. Good, and it's break time again. It's 27 nothing Dutchtown. 444 left to go. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Hollis Orthodontics, Cotta Law Firm, Raising Canes in Prairieville, Ross Downing, GMC, SEC Eating and Air, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Advantage Therapy, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffins Sports Medicine Program. And it's been an all Dutchtown night here at Griffin Field. Jeff Forrest, Patrick, email with you. 27 to nothing. Dutchtown with the lead. And, to kick it away. and Dutchtown has come full circle from week one. Could not Four score. Back deep for the wild and now players. kick back down another, the ball Another again. check again. Hey, Trying got, to get a cheap possession. I got corrected. Carson when they did that earlier, uh, we may have called it a fumble. Walker. But technically, nobody had possession. No, so, it's just a recovery of the ten. kick. So, I, mm -hmm. you know, one of our, our listeners was, was correcting me. They're on 33-yard well, line. I'm, I'm used to correcting you, but I didn't think the listeners uh, had to do it. I know, man. I just, well. Well, it's hard to see out here. It's, it's dark. And I'm behind a column. <laughs> like the column is where that happened so i was kind of peeking around on both sides to try to get an angle well we got to give these interns a good view jeff yeah and uh you know thanks to speaking of that thanks to rev for uh providing these guys with this opportunity rev helping out in ascension parish all the time and giving us this opportunity to cover Price's pass high school football is first down pass again short for looking for Ja'Cory Thomas, and yeah. just the connections can't be made here as uh, Price has come up short Second a lot. Second down for the Wildcats. And this is the opposite, like I said, North Shore 13 to nothing, and now the shoe's on the other foot. Dutchtown is the team that can score, and Walker is the one that's just struggling so far. And they are, they are four and a half minutes from going – in the first complete. place in 5-5-8 five, five, yeah. after one week. Jeff, you, you would have thought Walker and Denham Springs may have been the, the kind of favorites Mike coming Walker in. Uh, you you uh, would have to, thought. The, to the district with, you know, EA playing that schedule. Uh, Pass incomplete. And so after tonight, complete. you know, Denham Denver Springs Young. up 21 nothing on Live Oak, but you, you didn't envision Live Oak being one of the leaders in the, in the district. They played kind of an easier schedule, though, so, not compared to some of the other schools. Yeah. And, and Santa Ball is 3-2, and two, and they're still figuring out their offense, but they're still 3-2. and two. They, They're not a bad team, and uh, they, they're, they're not going to sneak up on anybody. They're going to get a lot of respect. You know, Walker was scoring a bunch of points, and for Dutchtown to pitch a shutout, Yes, it, Walker scored 56 one week. He scored it. like 30-something on Ponchatoula, too. Deep pass downfield on fourth down, overthrown. And Dutchtown will get the ball back, and either three timeouts Price will come off the clock or two minutes complete. is going to come off the clock. Dutchtown's got this one. 
most Cole likely. A little emotion on Coach Mastretta right Wild there. Uh, well, the you know, a lot of people ten. were not happy after two weeks. Seven points in two weeks, and everybody was like, what's going on with the offense? Now they're scoring 40, 30, 20 every week. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that's uh, got a lot to do with it. I, I know uh, – I know Lau has it on our sheet somewhere. The Wildcats are averaging. We talked about 56. They're averaging 36.6 points a game on offense. And, and Chris Howard and the Griffins, Agu, Langwa, McCaffrey. Hanbury. Hanbury. Bowie. All the Burrell. guys. Burrell. Yep. Uh, pitching a, pitching a shutout for the Griffins. So... Dutchtown will call the timeout. And uh, so we talked about it, and now let, let's, let's look at Dutchtown's schedule real fast and talk about what they got to look forward to this season. And so they started out 0-2 with the North Shore Ponchatoula games. I was wondering if I was just a bad luck charm on them or something because then they went to <laughs> Covington and won 35-14. Then they went to Walker, 37-15. Walker, 27-0. They get Live Oak next week, and Live Oak is down to Denham right now. And then you finish with Santa Monica, Denham, and EA. And all of a sudden, what looked like a, a really long season after the first two games is now looking like a playoff contender. Well, you're back to where we were from the beginning, I think, Jeff, when you thought every game was a 50-50 game, and you're sitting after five games, and you can't be 500, so you're three and two, and the rest of the season probably. And this is not just a win. This is a statement. Lagarde gets a few. Flag. Uh, Pyron's out the game. They took the two tackles out the game. Uh so you, you, you'll be three and two after tonight, get an extra day's rest. Uh, Champagne is the quarterback, by the way. Continue, I'm sorry. Uh, got homecoming, like to win against Live Oak next week. Griffins could be four and two going into that, that, that three-game stretch of Santa Mar, Denham Springs, and East Ascension, which you probably would have predicted was the three toughest three-game stretch that you had for the season. So now it's first and 20, but really academic from here. As it's a four-score game. Lagarde nice running vision. outside. Don't go out of bounds, but he has to. And a late flag. That might be contact after the play. Yep, that'll be uh, half the distance or close to it. It's at the 31. They'll call it 15. Uh, That'll put it at the 16. So, Coach, the game tomorrow, you saw Santa Mar. You haven't seen EA. I've seen both teams. You got any uh, ideas about what to expect tomorrow and tomorrow night in that game, well, EA and Santa Mar? You and I called that game last last year, week 10, didn't we? Yeah. And I, I, 10 to I, 6. I, I didn't expect Santa Mar to win that game. Uh, but... Right, uh, EA was playing for a district title, an outright district title. And so uh, I expect it to be another good football game again. You know, East Ascension with the schedule they played, they, they're they going to be ready. Yes. Santa Mar trying to uh, bounce back. Walker. Uh, I say bounce back. They won last week from the uh, Opelousas, and they got the tie in the win. All-time Santa Mar record, right? With, with Oliver, so he tied it last week, and if he can break it against against East Ascension, that'll be one to remember for sure. Yeah. If he can't remember one through 91, he you may be able to remember number 92. Knock it out on a gravely zero turn more. Both teams are still tremors. Still trying to find their identities, but um, last week was a very impressive performance for EA. So you know they're going to have a good, a good performance, and that one and four record is kind of deceptive, like we've been saying. Yep. And uh, Santa Monica's got a winning record. They mm -hmm. lost the game that we covered against Stopalusis, but they've scored points, and uh, they have they have the ability to uh, 
to make big things happen. So I'm expecting a really close game. I think it's going to be low scoring, but I think it's going to be a fun game, kind of like last year's game. Well, you know, early in the, when you and I called the Santa Mo Opelousas game, I thought Dutchtown and Santa Mo looked a lot alike with young quarterbacks and, and trying to get the run game going. And the next week, Dutchtown against uh, Covington really, really turned it on. You're looking at Coach Mistretta right there. And uh, he, he's got to love this turnaround. He, he looks like he's 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds lighter uh, <laughs> coming off his shoulders after the 0-2 start. Yep. They found the offense. What do you credit that to? I mean, is it just, is it just experience, timing, um, practice, getting, getting reps with a new running back and a new quarterback and all that type of stuff? I, I, I think – Oakland, first time starting, learning, you know, the whole new backfield. You, you really, you got to reinvent yourself on offense to a certain extent and realize that you're not going to score from 60 out like you've done for, for three years with Dylan uh, at any given time. And you got to go out there and put a workman like effort in. And uh, the offensive line has gotten better and they were able to run behind him. And Jeff, they had success against North Shore. They just, Dutchdown just kept shooting themselves in the foot and yeah. they would get 10 yards and get a first down and then a, a 10 yard holding call or an offsides or right. something put them behind the stick. So we really couldn't see what they could do if they put it together. And, you know, I just throw Ponchatoula game out. It's not really even fair to even put it in the record books under those conditions that they played in. And to talk about how that transit of property doesn't work, Walker will have beaten. Ponchatoula. Ponchatoula will beat in Dutchtown, but Dutchtown beat Walker. So that's not – that's not uh, – that, that, doesn't, that doesn't make mathematical sense, but it makes sense on a football field. McKeedron Harvey. And it's going to be third down, and the clock will continue to run unless Walker calls a timeout. They may not even bother right here. Dutchtown. And just let it run. Our games of the week, we talked about next week. Well, we talked about the game tomorrow night. We talked about the games next week, Live Oak and Dutchtown, Walker and East Ascension. Two weeks from now, Dutchtown's going to be back. That's going to be three weeks in a row for the Griffins as they're going to go to Santa Mall. And then Denham Springs is going to be at EA for EA's homecoming game. Both of those are Rev games. Yep. You and SWAC will probably get the Dutchtown Santa Mall game. Is, uh, I would I wonder, guess. I wonder if I wonder if Patrick Emo's gonna get the call. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Huh? Uh, but I don't know what's gonna happen as the timeout's being called by timeout Dutchtown. Dutchtown as they just let the clock run down to one and one thirty-seven left to go on the clock. So, the so right now, especially with this result, this we thought that this was kind of a kind of a, a jumbled bag of teams, and like you could just pull one team out every week, and that's what you got here. Although Dutchtown is really putting it to one of the one of the favorites, and we've said that. Uh, looking at the teams they played and looking at the results. And really, outside of, uh, you know, it, you, you talk about Denham. Denham is going to be a, a quality team. They won a playoff game last year, upsetting Central. So we'll see, what, we'll see where they stand in a couple of weeks. Well, Coach Beard, you know, has the respect of all the coaches in the area for the job he did at Live Oak and moving over to, to Denham in the last few years. Kedrick Harvey. So it's Harvey again, and it's fourth down, and the clock is going to run inside of one minute before they have to snap the ball. Dutchtown will not have to call a timeout right here. They don't have any. So 17, 16, 15, and you see Champagne still getting talked to on the sideline, so they may just take the – the delay of game penalty doesn't really matter now. You can't you just can't say enough about the about Guy Mastretta, the offense and the defense. Just uh, uh, this is a total team effort here tonight. The offense looked really good. Dukes looked good. Pyron looked good. AK looked good when he had it. Adams made a nice catch. But the defense, the defense is just the star of the night. 
and a knee, and they'll just give it to Walker with 35 seconds left. Yeah, the, well, the only I don't know who that, to that, give the game ball to. Uh, well, the, the the only misstep that you can think of, if you really want to pinpoint, we kicked a uh, touchdown, kicked the ball out of bounds, and missed a field goal. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, the they, they they played solid in all three phases of the ball game. So it'll be an interesting next five weeks. Yes. Well, four weeks. Four and a half. Four and a half. As, uh, you got the one game next. Tomorrow, actually, with EA at Santa Ma. And uh, over here next week, it's homecoming. And we talked about that, go schools and goblins. And on this field next week, a queen will be crowned. And a carry to the 30. And unless Walker decides to extend this game for some reason, this is it. I, th I don't think they'll run another play. All I can say is, wow, Coach. I mean, I don't want to – I don't I don't know. I'm, I'm dumbfounded. I mean, I expected a competitive game tonight. I, and I, I think that if one team would have taken the other team off the field, it wouldn't have been Dutchtown after seeing them the first couple of weeks. But who knows? Our final score, and we'll wrap it up afterwards. Our final score, 27 to nothing. Dutchtown with the win over Walker. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. Chris's Specialty Foods has been making Cajun meat products for almost 30 years. We do all the prep work so people can have home cooked meals without spending all day in the kitchen. Everything is done ourselves. With three locations in Louisiana and a fourth in Texas, we needed all of them connected to the same system for point of sale and telephone. Rev Business set us up and it's been a game changer. They have everything as national companies but with real local service. Rev Business is authentic Louisiana, just like Chris's. B.T. Chapman and A.J. Pickett with Advantage Therapy are honored and excited to team up with Dutchtown High School's athletics. At Advantage Therapy, we are dedicated to helping our patients regain the highest possible functional status through one-on-one -on -one patient care. Advantage Therapy has spent nearly two decades providing both outpatient orthopedic physical therapy and occupational therapy to the people of Ascension and surrounding parishes. From all of us at Advantage Therapy, Go Griffins! Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyron Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Hi, we are live with the PPTV Network, where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character, and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their record of success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy. Buick GMC Buying Center wants to buy your car. It's fast, easy, and fair. No matter what make, no matter what model, no matter what mileage, the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants it. And we'll pay you cash for it, even if you don't buy from us. It's the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Cash for your car at the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. 
From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Tata Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Tata Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Tata Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You gotta call. You gotta call Tata. Welcome back. And uh, Coach Guy Mastretta with the victory talk. As you see, Pearson Pyron and the other guys on the team with the with a victory over Walker, 27 to nothing, a shocker. It's not a shocker that Dutchtown won, but it's kind of a shocker that Dutchtown just dominated this game, 27 to nothing. Great performance by the offense and a great performance by the defense. Just an all-around team effort, and they need to be proud of themselves as they've turned this season around from 0-2 now to 3-2, and and uh, this is a whole new season, and they're 1-0 in district. And after this game, they made a statement that that this uh, might be one of the teams to beat in District 5-5A, but there's still four games left to go, so don't get overconfident yet. But this is one of those performances that you can hang a whole season on. Dominating a four and one Walker team, twenty seven to nothing. That's going to do it for our broadcast tonight. I want to remind you, though, tomorrow night is the big one. EA at the pit versus Santa Ma, and we'll be out there. I'll be out there with Coach Swack, and I'm looking forward to that. That's my first night with Swack, so that ought to be a that'll be a good uh, good fearsome twosome out there, and uh, that ought to be fun. And of course, we got our games next week. Got homecoming for Dutchtown against Live Oak, and then you got Walker going to hope to rebound over at East Ascension for our games of the week on Rev. So stay tuned. we got a great schedule of games on Rev this season. That's going to do it for our broadcast tonight. For Coach Email, I'm Jeff Porsche. Final score, Dutchtown 27, Walker 0. You've been watching the Rev Game of the Week. <laughs>